Hello everybody, this is Kate at the Library of Whispers and today I thought I would do something a little different I have my postscript book sales catalogue for June 2020 and I'm going to do it in a soft spoken voice for a change I normally do it, do it in a whisper um, but a couple of people have requested me use soft spoken voice so I thought I would do that now I have a coffee which I've already started as you can see and I'll have a little bit more and we shall take a look through this postscript and on the front is a beautiful white horse it looks like a stallion perhaps what does this say? A Mawari in Rajasthan, one of the remarkable images from Equus on the back cover. Okay, well, let's see if we can get there. Let's open this up. Okay, so here we have the featured titles. On this page and this page and here is theatre of the world I love, I love books on maps the maps that made history by Thomas R Berg nine pounds ninety nine was thirty let's take a read taking its title from the Flemish cartographer Abraham Ortelius's celebrated atlas of 1570, Theatre of the World, follows the development of map making from prehistoric rock carvings through the Renaissance to the digital age. Illustrated in colour throughout, it demonstrates how maps reflect our growing knowledge of the planet and our technical ability to chart its features. It also addresses the questions of who made the maps, on whose behalf, and what world view they express. And it's published by Hodder, 2018. And here we have a book on Francis I, the make of modern France by Leone Frida. And here he is on his horse, looking very regal. A proud, indomitable, absolutist monarch, Francis I, 1494 to 1547, was the king that his country needed, if not the one it might have wished for. And despite his achievements in unifying and glorifying France, and as the patron of art and architecture, who recruited Leonardo da Vinci to his court and built Fontainebleau. Francis is remembered, if at all, for his failings. In this biography, Leone Frieda offers a rigorous reassessment of the maker of modern France. £7.99 and it was £25. Hmm. This is a 16th century portrait. Over on this side we have more royalty, we have Eleanor of Aquitaine, Queen of France and England, Mother of Empires, by Sarah Cockrell, £9.99. Now let's have a sip of coffee. Before we continue, let's read this. It says, Married first to Louis the Seventh of France, then to Henry the Second of England, a mother to Richard the Lionheart and King John, Eleanor of Aquitaine, eleven twenty two to twelve oh four, became virtual ruler of England after Henry's death. Over eight hundred years, Eleanor has accrued layers of myth and historical interpretation in this new biography. Sarah Cockrell 
has returned to primary sources and recent scholarship to debunk the legends and reevaluate the Queen's life, her relationships with her sons and her relationship with the church. £9.99 Now this book is called Thoughts An Illustrated History by Jeremy Black and it's £14.99 It says After briefly surveying ancient constructions such as Maiden Castle and Gwalior Fort in India Jeremy Black goes on to present a history of fortifications based on their depiction on maps and plans. From Norman Castles, Pontefract is shown in a plan from 1561. Here, I think. Yep. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> no, this is a proposed East India Company fort at Bombay, Mumbai. 1665, so definitely not Pontefract. <laughs> the book shows how buildings as basis for attack or defence changed as ever more powerful armaments were developed up to the trenches and defences such as the Maginot and Siegfried lines in the 20th century. Interesting. Now this one is called No Tradesmen and No Women The Origins of the British Civil Service by Michael Coolican £8.99 Drawing on extensive research and 40 years experience as a civil servant Michael Coolican describes how the machinery of government has developed since the time of Thomas Cromwell. His forthright account assesses the successes and the failures of Whitehall departments in implementing government policy and explains how Victorian reforms created an elitist culture of nepotism. He argues that the resulting poor leadership, distrust of modern management practices and preferences for generalising, sorry, generalists over experts affects the service to this day. Now on this page, or these two pages, we have books that are back by popular demand. Let's see what we have. We have the Cabaret of Plants, Botany and the Imagination, £4.99 pence. A book on the church hills in Love and War, £6.99 A book on Vincent van Gogh, £9.99 Oh, it's on What the Suffragists Did Next Let's read this how the Fight for Women's Rights Went On by Mavis Curtis, £9.99 The Suffragists of the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies, the NUWSS, as distinct from the suffragettes, did not disband in 1917 when the vote was given to some women. Although franchise had been their primary goal, they had other aims for women. This book looks at the lives of eight suffragists and how they continued the struggle for equality in various fields. Among them, Eleanor Lodge in higher education, Ellen Wilkinson in socialist politics, and Dr. Isabel Emsley Hutton in medicine. Hmm. So we have some other, oh look, a jigsaw, the Londoners transport throughout the ages jigsaw, thousand pieces, now you know I love trains, that's great isn't it, £7.99, let's see, 
beginning with horse-drawn carriages and progressing to buses, trains and the underground, this 1,000-piece jigsaw shows how transport has changed. It includes a frameable print of the image, which was created in 1928 by artist Richard T. Cooper. Lovely. And then we also have a book on Edward the Elder, King of the Anglo-Saxons, Forgotten Son of Alfred, £9.99. And this is called To Free the Romanovs, Royal Kinship and Betrayal in Europe, 1917 to 1919, £9.99. Ooh, a hundred places you will never visit. The world's most secret locations. Let's see. £7.99. Okay. The world is full of places we will never be allowed to visit. Visit. Well, that's quite ironic at the moment because I can't even visit my local shop. <laughs> never mind any of these places. But I don't think that's quite what it means. <laughs> also secret. We haven't even heard of them. Illustrated in colour throughout. This book offers a glimpse of out-of-bounds locations, from Fort Knox to the Queen's bedroom. Well, you wouldn't really want to go into the Queen's bedroom, would you? Including the headquarters of security services, such as the CIA and Mossad, and the exclusion zones around the nuclear disaster sites at Chernobyl and Fukushima. And here is a world atlas. Do you like maps and atlases as well? Six pounds ninety nine pence. And here we have social history, cultural history pages. And I'm always forgetting my coffee, so let's have some more. Now this looks interesting. I've read some of Ruth Goodman's books before. They're really fun. This one's called How to Behave Badly in Renaissance Britain. I'm going to actually turn this over so I can see it a bit better. There we go. So it says... Um, Nothing reveals as much about a society as its bad behaviour. And if Shakespeare's England is remembered for courtly ceremony, it was also an age of brawling, boozing and bad-mouthing. Drawing on contemporary behaviour manuals, court cases and sermons, Ruth Godman, the presenter of Victorian Farm, reveals what most upset and infuriated our forebears. Her entertaining survey dishes the dirt on a ninny hammers. <laughs> Whittles, stinkards, and dragon draggle tails, and offers practical advice on how to handle yourself in a fight. Brilliant. <laughs> Seven pounds and ninety-nine pence. That's just what I need. <laughs> Let's see what else do we have. We have this one's called Prairie Fever. British aristocrats in the American. 1830 to 1890. £4.99 says, From the 1830s onwards, a succession of British aristocrats headed for the American West, taking with them their valets, their dogs and their prejudices. This sparkling account describes the newcomers' experiences as they crossed the country to meet Native Americans, hunt buffalo and build cattle empires, packed with lively incident and colourful personalities. It also charts their reception by Americans, often less than pleased at the return of their former colon colonial overlords. Well, that's understandable. 
and we also have, okay, this is a book called Britain's Wartime Evacuees, the people, places and stories of the evacuations told through the accounts of those who were there by Gillian Mawson, £7.99 And on this side, let's see, what else do we have? Hmm. Women of the 1960s, £6.99. The Scallywags, Memories of a Rascal's 1950s Childhood. Home Truths, An Alternative History of Every House. And at the bottom, there's Johnny Rotten. Punk Press, Rebel Rock in the Underground Press, 1968 to 80. Gosh, that seems like such a long time ago now. Okay. This is General History and Crime. And on this side we have Ancient History and Archaeology. And this one is called The Flower of All Cities. The History of London from Earliest Times to the Great Fire. Robert Wynne Jones. 9.99 In 1501 when William Dunbar described it as the flower of cities all. London was already an ancient capital, a great port, and a hub of culture and commerce. In 1666, the Great Fire destroyed almost all of the old walled city and environs. Drawing on archaeological written and pictorial records, Wynne Jones traces London's history from ancient Britons through Roman, Saxon, medieval, Tudor and Stuart times to the aftermath of the fire. The book concludes with four walks for rediscovering the pre-1666 city. Interesting. Here we have the foil fall of the ancient Maya, solving the mystery of the Maya collapse by David David Webster, nine pounds and ninety-nine pence. Oh, this one looks interesting. Arthur, warrior and king. I like stories about King Arthur. Seven pounds ninety-nine pence. Um King Arthur long regarded as the leader of oppressed Britons against invading Saxon hordes, emerges from this fresh analysis as a boastful Irish raider who used his battles to carve out a kingdom in Western Britain. Taking an interdisciplinary approach, Colton combines evidence from archaeology, literature and the study of place names to reconstruct the career of the 6th century ruler, who he suggests was a pagan warlord, and to propose a new location for the renowned Battle of Baden. 7.99 And here we have Le Mort de Arthur, the cross found on Arthur's grave at Glastonbury. Here. And a ceramic tile designed by John Moyer Smith. 1839 to 1912. And underneath that we have a brief history of the Celts. £3.99. Sounds good. Warfare in Northern Europe before the Romans. Gladiator. The Roman fighters an official manual. <laughs> Now 
Now you'll notice that I am naturally drawn towards the history books more than anything else. This one looks good. Edward II, The Unconventional King by Catherine Warner. £7.99. Edward II, who ruled from 1307 until 1327, when he was forced to abdicate was undeniably a failure as a king and as a war leader. Catherine Warner's biography accepts Edward's many failings, but seeks to provide a fuller portrait than the usual portrayal of the wayward and ineffectual ruler. She explores Edward's personality and contemporary perceptions of him, demolishes the myths, and reveals an erratic person who was born into a, an hereditary monarchy and had no choice but to be king. Let's have a bit more coffee. Okay. And then on this side we have a brief history of the Crusades. Here is a crusader. £3.99 and then there is the short history of the Anglo-Saxons £3.99 A brief history of the life in the Middle Ages £3.99 This one is called The Black Prince of Florence The Spectacular Life and Treacherous World of Alessandro de' Medici £9.99 And this is a Nice book on medieval women. £9.99. And this book is called Rebel in the Ranks Martin Luther, the Reformation, and the Conflicts that Continue to Shape Our World by Brad S. Gregory. Seven pounds and ninety-nine pence. And here is a book on Waterloo, the history of four days, three armies, and three battles. Seven ninety-nine. Tragic encounters: the people's history of Native Americans by Paige Smith. Seven pounds ninety-nine pence. And here we have contemporary history on this side and here we have books on the British Isles. Let's see what we have. We have a book on subterranean London. Interesting, £7.99. And Boland. That is about the forest of Boland. Six ninety nine. English County Regiments. Three ninety nine. Early vehicle lighting. I mean, you can literally get books about anything, <laughs> even early vehicle lighting. Two pounds ninety nine pence. And here is a book on Dorset and the sea. Ninety-nine. Gardens and nature on this side, and animals and pets. The English landscape garden. Here is the Belvedere Tower, a Clermont landscape garden, Surrey, built by Sir John Vanbrugh, 1664 to 1726. Now, this is interesting. Earth to Earth, a natural history of churchyards by Stefan Busaki, 5.99. Let's read this. As 
protected sacred places, churchyards provide a tranquil environment in which wild plants and animals can thrive, even when their nearby natural habitats have been destroyed. With photographs, newly commissioned drawings and passages from literature, Professor Buksaki celebrates this abundance of nature among the headstones, exploring the long history of our churchyards and describing the species most commonly found there. From mighty ancient yews to wood lice, oh, I really hate wood lice, nicknamed church pigs, <laughs> graveyard beetles and lichens, forward by Lord Harry's. And this is biography. Let me have more coffee. Let me see. Now this is a book, this is a biography, or is it an autobiography, of David Attenborough, Adventures of a Young Naturalist, The Zoo Quest Expeditions, 7.99, Isabella France, The Rebel Queen by Catherine Warner, 6.99, Nelson's right hand man, the life and times of Vice Admiral Sir Thomas Fremantle, 799. And here is a book on Lincoln's notebooks, letters, speeches, journals, and poems by Dan Tucker. Let's see, 499. The United States' 16th president was a gifted writer whose speeches are still quoted and admired around the world. Among the items in this selection, from his public and private writings, are his drafts of the Gettysburg, and jottings from other for other speeches, pages from his scrapbooks, letters and telegrams, a brief auto autobiography, education, defective, and poetry from his teenage years. Mm -hmm. Looks interesting. This is called Bicycles, Bloomers, and Great War Rationing Recipes. <laughs> the Life and Times of Dorothy Peel, OB, by Vicky Straker. Dubbed the Nigella Lawson of her day, Dorothy Peel wrote novels and household books and devised recipes for the Ministry of Food during the First World War. This volume put together by her great-great-granddaughter, is divided into two parts. The first tells of her life, with sections on parties, food and fashion, and realities of war. The second includes recipes, bacon pudding, potato cheese, feather pie, I hope it hasn't got any feathers inside, from before, during and after the war, all tried, tested and adapted. Seven ninety nine. Now here we have a literary biography, a book on Chaucer by Peter Ackroyd. Mm, and on this side we have literature, literature, sorry, and poetry. Selected Poems by Seamus Heaney Genius of Jane Austen, 6.99 And here we have Music A book on Louis Armstrong, 4.99 Bob Dylan, 
799 here are the performing arts Charlton Heston Vivian Lee These, these pages are called Summer Reading. Let's see, what do we have? Let's see what appeals to me. The Conqueror's Queen. $3.99. Ooh, the complete illustrated Lewis Carroll. James, I like P.D. James. Death Comes to Pemberley. I think I might have read that one actually, 2.99. Yeah, I think I read that. Here we have art books. We have Art and the War at Sea and what's this? Painting the Warmth of the Sun, St. Ives Artists, 1939-1975 Peter Bruegel the Elder Hieronymus Bosch, three ninety nine. Mm, the Renaissance Masters. These look nice books, don't they? We have Sublime Beauty, Raphael's Portrait of a Lady with a Unicorn, five ninety nine. We have Raphael, Masterpieces of Art. Six ninety nine, Art of Renaissance Rome, Artists and Patrons in the Eternal City, nine ninety nine. More on Raphael, Leonardo da Vinci's masterworks, Art in the Age of the Medici, Michelangelo, more Michelangelo. Frescoes from the 13th to the 18th century. 50 pounds, gosh. Art books are so expensive. Sometimes, anyway. And here we have some academic titles The Wisdom of Love in the Song of Songs. Nine pounds, ninety-nine pence. Judea and Rome in coins, sixty-five BCE to one three five CE. Celebrating Britain, Canaletto, Hogarth, and patriotism. Eleven ninety nine. All sorts of things. And science and maths. Planet Earth Owner's Workshop Manual. From 4.5 billion years ago to the present owner's workshop manual, 9.99. From zero to infinity in 26 centuries, the extraordinary story of maths, three pounds ninety-nine. Geological structures, 
an introductory field guide, five ninety nine. And we have religion on this side. Sports and games. The body, a complete user's guide. How your body functions and how to keep it healthy and strong. Twelve pounds and ninety-nine pence. Robin Hood folklore section. What does this say? Green Lord of the Wild Wood by John Matthews. As well as the historical Robin, John Matthews explores the various manifestations of Robin in folklore and legend and relates the merry men myths to mummers and morris dancers from ancient lore, ballads, poems, and masks. Robin emerges as a semi-divine embodiment of the mysterious, all-pervading life force of the land's green man, whose spirit lives on in the stories of his exploits. The book concludes with a substantial collection of Robin Hood ballads, £7.99. Books on cooking and food. And I am nearly at the end of my coffee. Let's see, what do we have? Seasonal Spanish food. And the Catalan kitchen. From mountains to city and sea, recipes from Spain's culinary heart. 9.99. And then here we have books on Thai food, food from Argentina, and food, people and stories from Tel Aviv, Japanese cooking, Jewish vegetarian cooking, and the really quite good British cookbook, £7.99. Here we have some stationery and language. I used to really love um, note cards, sending note cards to people, but these days we don't really get much in the post, do we? In terms of letters and writing and things. This is a lovely writing set, look at this. British Library Maps, 5 99 Solve it like Sherlock. Four ninety nine. Let's have a look. By Stuart Ross. Invite readers to test their powers of reasoning against those of the world's most famous detective. The first part of the book sets out the stories of twenty five newly discovered cases and from the evidence they contain we must unravel the mystery. The second part explains how Holmes correctly interpreted the facts to solve 25, 24 sorry, of the 25 cases, £4.99. And hmm. here we have military history. Lots of military history. And some more. And some memoirs. Dad's Army. Search of the Real Dad's Army. The Home Guard and the Defence of the United Kingdom, 1940 to 1944. It's a bestseller.
books on transport submarines railways Rail railways in the landscape how they transformed the face of britain 999 More books on travel, great railway journeys in Australia and New Zealand, 9.99. And we, we, on this page have design, fashion and architecture, British industrial architecture, Victorian and Edwardian, 9.99. And crafts, hobbies and collectibles Japanese papier mache and tinware 1740-1940 Quilt books This is called Landmarks of the World Oh, it's a colouring book Colour Your Way from Barcelona to Beijing Big Deca, four ninety-nine. But that's nice. Home sewing techniques. And children's books. Beatrix Potter. Inside ancient Athens. I do like kids' books. These particularly these nice. Ones with um, lovely illustrations. That looks good. The periodic table book. And there we are. We are at the end. Oh, maybe not actually. Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. And the back page cover. and things. Edwardian railways in postcards. Looks like fun. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me while I look at my postscript book sales catalogue. And, uh, as usual, this is Kate at the Library of Whispers saying I shall see you very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.